Sometimes we may have multiple maps that show the same space at different points in time or different kinds of information. And we want to be able to lay them one on top of the other, but have only one show at a time. The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. We can do this in Neatline several different ways. One would be to add these maps to the waypoints over here on the right and have our users select them one at a time. So if we change our widget settings to waypoints and change the fill opacity on this map to zero when it's not selected and one when it is selected and then save make sure that our settings were saved. Do the same for stroke opacity. Then for our second map we'll do the same. Add to waypoints and set our opacity to zero when the map is not selected. Now I should be able to move from not seeing the map to seeing one map to seeing a different map. And I can toggle between these. And the geometry doesn't stay, change. Notice it's staying in place in this case. But what if I want this change to happen without the user being able to control it, say uh, showing change over time. I can actually link the visibility of each map to the timeline. And this is true as well for geometries. So keep this in mind for your points and polygons as well. Now the map that we currently are editing is the Sanborn 1913 map of Durham. I could come to this dates area and I can add a start date for that map and an end date. These two text boxes will add information to the timeline about this particular map. But there are two other boxes in the date area that do not add visible information to the timeline but control instead the visibility of specific layers or geometries on the map. These are the before and after date. So if I want my map to appear before 1914, for example, I would simply add 1914 into my before date box. If I only wanted it to appear, say, after 1912, I would add the after date 1912. This would ensure that my map would only appear during the year 1913. Now I actually want to make this a little bit broader so I'm going to specify that this map be shown before 1931 but after 1912. This way my two maps will line up seamlessly in the timeline. I'll save that and now I am in my timeline before 1913 uh, on the map. If I scroll along my timeline, the map appears when I hit 1912. Let's specify after 1913 so that it will appear in the year that it was created. Then I want to make this second map appear in 1931. So I will go to Style and in the After Date, I will just enter After 1930 and Save. 
And then one final thing, I'm actually going to change my, def my interval units to decade so that I can scroll more quickly to be able to view this. So right now, by default, I'm in 1892. If I scroll forward, Ah, so right now my map is showing up in the waypoints, but not in my map itself. Why? Because I have actually forgotten to make sure that the opacity is set to 1 at all times when the map is visible on the timeline. So let's make sure I've done this for both maps. Now, let's see if this works. I scroll forward, I've hit 1913, the first map appears, and because it still has the waypoints widget attached, it also appears in waypoints, but I could turn that off and the map would still appear. Now, if I scroll forward again to 1930, I have a brief period of time when these are overlapping and maybe I want that, and then my map disappears and I see the later map underneath. Now if I didn't want this overlap to happen, what would I need to do? I would need to make sure that the before and after dates do not overlap. So if I return to the Sanborn 1913 map and look at the before date, I have before set to 1931. Now I have 1930 set for uh, the map underneath. If I didn't want them to overlap and 1930 was the change date, I would want to make sure that before for the Sanborn 1913 map is set to 1930, the same year uh, as the after date for the HOLC map below. Now I should have a smooth transition between those two maps.